nerves of abdomen. Lower intercostal nerves. Course. The ventral rami of T7 T11 pass forwards in the intercostal spaces below respective intercostal vessels. At the back of chest they lie between the pleura and posterior intercostal membrane but in most of their course they lie between internal intercostal and intercostalized rami. As they reach the anterior ends of their respective spaces, the 7th and 8th nerves curve upwards and medially across the deep surface of costal margin, passing between digitations of transversus abdertinus then piercing the posterior layer of internal oblique, to enter the rectus sheath, and continue to run upwards and medially parallel to the costal margin. After supplying rectus abdominis, they pierce the anterior wall of the rectus sheath to reach the skin. Seventh nerve supplies skin of the epigastrium and eighth below it. At the anterior ends of ninth, tenth, and eleventh intercostal spaces, the ninth, tenth and eleventh intercostal nerves pass between digitations of transversus abdominis to lie between it and the internal oblique and run in this plane. The ninth nerve runs horizontally, but tenth and eleventh run downwards and medially. When they reach the lateral margin of rectus abdominis, they pierce the posterior layer of rectus sheath, enter it, pierce the muscle and its anterior sheath to supply the skin. The tenth nerve supplies the band of skin which includes the umbilicus. The ventral ramus of T12 is larger than the others. It accompanies the subcostal artery along the lower border of 12th rib and passes behind the lateral arcuate ligament. It lies behind the kidney, anterior to quadratus lumborum, pierces the aponeurosis of transversus abdominis and runs in the interval between transversus and internal oblique. Branches, muscular, the intercostal and subcostal nerves and their collateral branches supply intercostal muscles and muscles of anterolateral abdominal wall. T12 supplies pyramidalis also, if present. Cutaneous, the terminal parts of T7 T12 nerves are called as the anterior cutaneous branches. These supply the skin close to the anterior median line. T10 supplying the skin around umbilicus, T7, the skin of epigastrium and T8, T9 the intervening skin between epigastriurn and the umbilicus. T11, T12, and iliohippogastric, L1, supply the skin between umbilicus and pubic symphysis. The lateral cutaneous branches of the T7 T11 intercostal nerves divide into anterior and posterior branches to supply the skin of lateral side of abdomen and back. The lateral cutaneous branch of T12 supplies the skin of anterior part of the gluteal region. Upper lumbar nerves, 1 iliohippogastric nerve, 2 ilioinguinal nerve, 3 genitofemoral nerve, 4 lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh. Lumbar plexus, formed by ventral rami of LL, L2, L3 and part of L4. These rami divide into dorsal and ventral divisions. From the ventral divisions of these rami arise ilioinguinal, L1, genitofemoral, LL, L2, obturator, L2, L3, L4, accessory obturator, L3, L4, nerves. The dorsal divisions O1 these rami give rise to lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh, L2, L3, femoral nerve, L2, L3, L4, appendix 1. Iliohippogastric contains fibers of both ventral and dorsal divisions, L1. Sacral plexus. It is formed by ventral rami of part of L4, whole of L5, S1, S2, S3 nerves. Few muscular branches are given off from the rami. Then these divide into ventral and dorsal divisions. Branches arising from ventral divisions are, L nerve to quadratus femoris, L4, LS, S1 supplies quadratus femoris, inferior gemellus, and hip joint. Two nerve to obturator internus, L5, S1, S2 supplies obturator internus and L superior gemellus. 3 3 pudendal nerve, S2 S3 S4 4 perforating cutaneous nerve S3 S4 supplies small area of skin of gluteal region 5 tibial part of sciatic nerve L4 L5 S1 S2 S3 supplies hamstrings all muscles of the calf and of the sole 
6 posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh, SI, S2 supplies skin of back of thigh. Branches from dorsal divisions are, 1 superior gluteal nerve, L4, L5, S1 supplies gluteus medullus, gluteus minimus, and tensor fascia lati. 2 inferior gluteal nerve, L5, S1, S2 supplies only gluteus maximus. 3 common peroneal part of sciatic nerve, L4, LS, SI, S2 supplies everters and foot and dorsiflexors of ankle joint and extensor digit orum brevis. Pudendal nerve. Pudendal nerve supplies the skin, external genital organs and muscles O1 perineum. It is concerned with micturition, defecation, erection, ejaculation, and in females, with part urition. It is accompanied by internal pudendal vessels. Root value, it arises from the sacral plexus in the pelvis. Its root value is ventral rami of S2, S3, S4 segments of spinal cord. Course, it starts in the pelvis, enters the gluteal region through greater sciatic notch, lies on the sacrospinous ligament, leaves the gluteal region through lesser sciatic notch. It just peeps into the gluteal region to enter the pudendal canal in the lateral wall of the ischiorectal fossa. Branches, inferior rectal nerve. It supplies skin around anus external anal sphincter and lining of anal canal below pectinate line, perior tenel nerve, two medial and lateral scrotal slash labial branches. Muscular branches to deep transversus perinea, ischiocavinosis, bulbospongiosis, external anal sphincter, levator ani, corpus spongiosum, penis and urethra, lower 2.5 cm of vagina. 3 dorsal nerve of penis or clitoris, passes through deep perineal space, then runs on the dorsum of penis slash clitoris and ends in the glands, supplying skin of body of penis slash clitoris and of the glands. Clinical anatomy, pudendal nerve block is given in some vaginal operations and may be given during delivery. Abdominal part of sympathetic trunk. Sympathetic trunk runs along the medial border of psoas major muscle. It is continuous with the pelvic part by passing behind the common iliac vessels. There are four ganglia in the lumbar or abdominal part. Only upper two ganglia receive white ramus commun icons from the ventral primary rami of first and second lumbar nerves. Branches. One gray rami commun icons to the lumbar spinal nerves. These pass along the spinal nerves to be distributed to the sweat glands, cutaneous blood vessels and erector pili muscles, pseudomotor, vasomotor, and pilomotor. Two postganglionic fibers medially to the aortic plexus Three postganglionic fibers pass in front of common iliac vessels to form hypogastric plexus, which is also supplemented by branches of aortic plexus. Aortic plexus this plexus is formed by preganglionic sympathetic, postganglionic sympathetic, preganglionic parasympathetic, and visceral afferent fibers around the abdominal aorta. The plexus is concentrated around the origin of ventral and lateral branches of abdominal aorta. These are known as coeliac plexus, superior mesenteric plexus, inferior mesenteric plexus, and renal plexus. Pelvic part of sympathetic trunk. It runs in front of sacrum, medial to ventral sacral foramina. Caudally the two trunks unite and fuse into a single ganglion imper in front of coccyx. There are four ganglia in this part of sympathetic trunk. Their branches are, gray rami commun icons to the sacral and coccygeal nerves. Branches to the pelvic plex uses. Collateral or prevertebral ganglia and plex uses. Coeliac plexus. It is the largest of the three autonomic plex uses, e.g. coeliac, superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric plex uses. It is a dense network of nerve fibers which unite the two coeliac ganglia. The ganglia receive the greater splanchnic nerves, lesser splanchnic nerves of both sides including some filaments of vagi and vernt nerves. Coeliac ganglia are two irregularly shaped ganglia. Each ganglion receives greater splanchnic nerve. The lower part of the ganglion receives lesser splanchron nerve and is also called as aorticorinal ganglion. The aorticorinal ganglion gives off the renal plexus which accompanies the renal vessels. 
Secondary plex uses arising from coeliac and aorticoronal plex uses are distributed along the branches of the aorta, namely phrenic, splenic, left gastric, hepatic, interms enteric, suprarenal, renal, gonadal, superior and inferior mesenteric plex uses, and abdominal aortic plexus. Superior hypogastric plexus. This plexus lies between the two common iliac arteries and is formed by aortic plexus. One branches from third and fourth lumbar sympathetic ganglia. It divides into right and left inferior hypogastric plexus, pelvic plexus, which runs on the medial side of internal iliac artery and is supplemented by pelvis splanchnic nerves, parasympathetic nerves. Thus inferior hypogastric plexus contains both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. These are for the supply of the pelvic viscera along the branches of the arteries. The plex uses supply gastrointestinal tract and genitourinary tract. Autonomic nerve supply of various organs. Gastrointestinal tract, esophagus, it receives its nerve supply from vagus and sympathetic. Cervical part of esophagus receives branches from recurrent laryngeal nerve of vagus and middle cervical ganglion of sympathetic trunk. Thoracic part gets branches from vagal trunks and esophageal plexus as well as from sympathetic trunks and greater splanchnic nerves. Abdominal part receives fibers from vagal trunk, i.e. anterior and posterior gastric nerves, thoracic part of sympathetic trunks, greater splanchnic nerves and plexus around left gastric artery. The nerves form a plexus called myenteric plexus between the layers of the muscularis externa and another one in the submucous layer. Abdom, sympathetic supply reaches from coeliac plexus along gastric and gastroepiploic arteries. A few branthes also reach from thoracic and lumbar sympathetic trunks. Parasympathetic supply is derived from vagus nerves. The left vagus forms anterior gastric, while right vagus comprises posterior gastric nerve. The anterior gastric nerve supplies cardiac orifice, anterior surface of body as well as fundus of stomach, pylorus, and liver. Posterior gastric nerve supplies posterior surface of body and fundus till pyloric antrum. It gives a number of coeliac branches, which form part of the coeliac plexus. Vagus is secretomotor to stomach. Its stimulation causes secretion which is rich in pepsin. Sympathetic inhibits peristalsis and is motor to the pyloric sphincter. It also carries pain fibers from stomach. Spasm, ischemia, and distension causes pain. Small intestine, the nerves of this part of the gut are derived from coeliac ganglia formed by posterior gastric nerve, parasympathetic, and the plexus around superior mesenteric artery. These nerves form myenteric plexus and submucous plexus. Parasympathetic fibers relay in the ganglion cells present in these plex uses. Sympathetic inhibits the peristaltic movements of intestine but stimulates the sphincters. Large intestine, large intestine except the lower half of anal canal is supplied by both components of autonomic nervous system. The derivatives of midgut, i.e. cecum, vermiform appendix, ascending colon, and right two-thirds of transverse colon receive their sympathetic nerve supply from coeliac and superior mesenteric ganglia and parasympathetic from vagus nerve. Left one-third of transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and upper half of anal canal, developed from hindgut and anorectal canal, receive their sympathetic nerve supply from lumbar part of sympathetic trunk and superior hypogastric plexus through the plex uses on the branches of inferior mesenteric artery. Its effect is chiefly vasomotor. Parasympathetic supply of colon is received from pelvic splanchnic nerves. Pelvic splanchnic nerves give fibers to inferior hypogastric plex uses to supply rectum and upper half of anal canal. Some fibers of inferior hypogastric plexus pass up through superior hypogastric plexus and get distributed along the branches of inferior mesenteric artery to the left one-third of transverse colon, descending and sigmoid colon. Rectum and anal canal, sympathetic fibers pass along inferior mesenteric and superior rectal arteries also via superior and inferior hypogastric plex uses. Parasympathetic supply is from pelvic splanchnic nerve, which joins inferior hypogastric plexus. This supply is motor to muscles of rectum and inhibitory to internal sphincter. 
the external anal sphincter is supplied by inferior rectal branch of pudendal nerve. Afferent impulses of physiological distension of rectum and sigmoid colon are carried by parasympathetic, whereas pain impulses are conveyed both by sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. Pancreas, branches of coeliac plexus pass along the arteries. Sympathetic is vasomotor. The nerve fibers make synaptic contact with the sinner cells before innervating the eyelets. The parasympathetic ganglia lies in sparse connective tissue of the gland and in the islet cells. Liver, nerves of the liver are derived from hepatic plexus which contain both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. These accompany the blood vessels and bile ducts. Both types of nerve fibers also reach the liver through various peritoneal folds. Gallbladder, parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves of gallbladder are derived from coeliac plexus, along the hepatic artery, hepatic plexus, and its branches. Fibers from the right phrenic nerve, C4, through the communication of coeliac and phrenic plexus also reach gallbladder in the hepatic plexus. The reason of pain in the right shoulder, from where impulses are carried by lateral supraclavicular nerve C4, in cholecystitis is the stimulation of phrenic nerve fibers, C4, due to the communication of phrenic plexus and hepatic plexus via coeliac plexus. Genitourinary tract kidneys. The kidneys are supplied by renal plexus formed from coeliac ganglion, coeliac plexus, lowest thoracic splanchnic nerve, and first lumbar splanchnic nerve. The plexus runs along the branches of renal artery to supply the vessels, renal glomeruli, and tubules. These are chiefly vasomotor in function. Ureter is supplied in its upper part from renal and aortic plexus, middle part from superior hypogastric plexus and lower part from hypogastric nerve and inferior hypogastric plexus. Vesicle plexus, sympathetic fibers arise from TLL and T12 segments and L1 and L2 segments of spinal cord. Parasympathetic fibers arise from sacral S2, S3, S4 segments of spinal cord, which relay in the neurons present in and near the wall of urinary bladder. Parasympathetic is motor to the muscular coat and inhibitory to the sphincter, sympathetic is chiefly vasomotor. Emptying and filling of bladder is normally controlled by parasympathetic only. Male reproductive organs. Testicular plexus accompanies the testicular artery to reach the testis. It is formed by renal and aortic plexus, and also from superior and inferior hypogastric plex uses. This plexus supplies the epididymis and ductus deferens. Prostatic plexus is formed from inferior hypogastric plexus and branches are distributed to prostate, seminal vesicle, prostatic urethra, ejaculatory ducts, erectile tissue of penis, penile part of urethra and bulbarethral glands. Sympathetic nerves cause vasoconstriction, Parasympathetic nerves cause vasodilatation. Female reproductive organs. Ovary and uterine tube receive their nerve supply from plexus around the ovarian vessels. This plexus is derived from renal, aortic plex uses and also superior and inferior hypogastric plex uses. Sympathetic fibers derived from T10 and T11 segments of spinal cord are vasomotor in nature, whereas parasympathetic fibers are probably vasodilator in function. Uterus, it is supplied by uterovaginal plexus, formed from the inferior hypogastric plexus. The sympathetic fibers are derived from T12 and L1 segments of spinal cord. Parasympathetic fibers arise from S2, S3, S4 segments of spinal cord. Sympathetic causes uterine contraction and vasoconstriction, while parasympathetic nerves produce vasodilatation and uterine inhibition. Vagina is supplied by nerves arising from inferior hypogastric plexus and uterovaginal plexus. These supply wall of vagina including vestibular glands and clitoris. Parasympathetic fibers contain vasodilator effect on the erectile tissue. In some diseases affecting the nerve trunks near their origins, the pain is referred to their peripheral terminations. In tuberculosis of thoracic vertebrae, the pain is referred to abdomen either as constricting pain when one nerve is involved or general diffuse pain when more nerves are involved. The muscle and skin of the ureter olateral abdominal wall is supplied by thoracic, T, 712 spinal nerves. 
these muscles protect the underlying viscera effectively. Any blow to the abdominal wall will do no harm to the viscera if the muscles are firmly contracted. If the muscles are caught unawares, blow can do a lot of damage to viscera. Mostly there is reflex contraction of muscles if there is any attack to the skin. The lower intercostal nerves are connected to sympathetic ganglia via the Rami Komun icons. From these ganglia arise greater splanchnic nerves which supply abdominal viscera. In injury to the viscera or peritonitis, the muscles of abdominal wall firmly contract, giving rise to board-like rigidity to prevent any further insult to the viscera. If the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh gets compressed as it pierces the inguinal ligament, there is pain tingling, numbness and anesthesia over the anterolateral aspect of thigh. This is called moralgia paresthetica. Appendix, paramedian incision, these are given to open up the abdominal cavity. In paramedian incision the rectus abdominis muscle is pushed laterally so that the various nerves supplying the rectus muscle are not pulled or injured. Inguinal hernia. Hernia is the protrusion of the contents of a cavity through any of its walls. Hernia is common at any weak spot in any of the walls. Testis descends down along a peritoneal process called processus vaginalis. The connection is usually obliterated. In some cases the connection between peritoneal cavity and processus vaginalis remains open giving rise to congenital inguinal hernia. Femoral hernia the femoral canal is the medial compartment of the femoral sheath. It permits dilatation of femoral vein whenever required. This canal is wider in females than males because of the broad pelvis and smaller vessels. Sometimes a part of intestine or peritoneum may project in the femoral canal and be seen as a swelling below and lateral to pubic tubercle. The condition is called femoral hernia. It is never congenital. Abdominal paracentesis collection of fluid in the peritoneal cavity is called ascites. In these cases the excess fluid has to be removed. For the removal, abdominal paracentesis is done with a trocar and cannula. The site is usually midway between umbilicus and pubic symphysis. Peritonitis, inflammation of the peritoneum is called peritonitis. It is usually secondary to perforation of any viscera. The anterior abdominal muscles are in a state of contraction, and the condition is called board-like rigidity. Peritonitis is common in females, as the peritoneal cavity communicates with outside through fallopian tubes uterus and vagina. Internal hernia, sometimes a loop of intestines enters a foramen, fossae, fold within the abdominal cavity itself, but cannot come out. It may become obstructed or strangulated, lack of blood supply. The condition is acute and needs immediate attention and treatment. Femoral and inguinal hernia are external hernia. Morrison's pouch, the intraperitoneal space or pouch between the posterior surface of liver, right kidney and hepatic flexure is called Morrison's or hepatornal pouch. When a person is lying down, this pouch is the deepest. So pus or fluid tend to gravitate in this pouch. Abdominal policeman, the greater omentum is a four-layered peritoneum between greater curvature O1 stomach and transverse colon. It hangs down and covers all the abdominal viscera like an apron. It also moves. Any infected viscera or perforating viscera may be sealed by greater omentum. So it does try to limit the infection and hence is called abdominal policeman. Pouch of Douglas the rectouterine pouch in females is the deepest or most dependent part or peritoneal cavity in sitting position. It lies at a depth of 5.5 cm from the skin of perineum. Gastric ulcers The gastric ulcers are common along the lesser curvatures as the fluids, hot slash cold, alcoholic beverages pass along lesser curvature. The blood supply is also relatively less along the lesser curvature so the ulcers are common here. Gastric pain is felt in the epigastrium because the stomach is supplied from segments T6 T10 of the spinal cord, which also supply the upper part of the abdominal wall. Referred pain in early appendicitis, the visceral peritoneum over vermiform appendix is supplied by lesser splanchnic nerve which arises from thoracic tense sympathetic ganglion. T10 spinal segment also receives the sensation of pain from umbilical area. Since somatic pain is better appreciated than visceral pain, 
Pain of early appendicitis is referred to umbilical region. Later on there is pain in right fossa due to inflammation of local parietal peritoneum. Intestine eye obstruction, intestinal obstruction is caused by tubercular ulcers not typhoid ulcers. In tubercular ulcers, the lymph vessels are affected, these pass circularly around the gut wall. During healing, these cause constriction of the gut wall and subsequent obstruction. Typhoid ulcers lie longitudinally along the untum's enteric border of the gut. These do not cause obstruction during healing. Intussusception, rarely a segment or intestine enters into the lumen of proximal segment of intestine, causing obstruction and strangulation. It may be ileoileal or iliocolic. Meckel's diverticulum, the apex of midgut loop is connected to secondary yolk sac by vitellointestinal duct. The proximal part of vitellointestinal duct may persist as Meckel's diverticulum. It is 2 inches long present at the untum's enteric border of ileum, 2 feet away from iliacecal junction. Meckel's diverticulum may be connected to umbilicus by a fibrous band around which intestine may rotate and get obstructed. Internal hemorrhoids, the superior rectal artery divides into right and left branches. Only the right branch divides further into anterior and posterior branches. The veins follow the arteries. The venous radicles are in 3, 7, 11 o'clock positions. The internal piles are accordingly in 3, 7, 11 o'clock positions. Cholecystitis, inflammation of the gallbladder is called cholecystitis. There is pain over right hypochondrium, radiating to the inferior angle of right scapula or to the right shoulder. Cholelithiasis, stone formation in the gallbladder is called cholelithiasis. Splenomegaly. Enlargement of spleen is called splenomegaly. It occurs mostly in malaria and blood disorders. Splenectomy, removal of spleen is called splenectomy. One must be careful of the tail of pancreas during splenectomy. Diabetes mellitus. Deficiency of insulin causes diabetes mellitus. Carcinoma of head of pancreas. Carcinoma of head of pancreas causes pressure over the underlying bile duct which leads to persistent obstructive jaundice. Nepatitis. Inflammation of liver is referred to as hepatitis. It may be infective or amoebic hepatitis. Cirrhosis. Due to malnutrition or alcohol abuse, the liver tissue undergoes fibrosis and shrinks. This is called cirrhosis of the liver. Common diseases of kidney, the common diseases of kidney are nephrites, pyelonephritis, tuberculosis of kidney, renal stones, and tumors. Common manifestations of a kidney disease are renal edema and hypertension. Renal transplantation can be tried in selected cases. Lithotripsy is being used for removal of stones. Ureteric colic, the ureteric colic is referred to TLLT12 segments. The pain radiates from loin to the groin. Hysterectomy, the procedure of removing uterus for various reasons is called hysterectomy. One has to carefully ligate the uterine artery, which crosses the ureter lying below the base of broad ligament. The integrity of ureter has to be maintained. Tubectomy, this is a simple operative procedure done in females for family welfare. The peritoneal cavity has to be opened in females. The fallopian tube or uterine tube is ligated at two places and intervening segment is removed. The protour is done on both sides. Rupture of male urethra, the membranous part of urethra is likely to be ruptured. The urine fills superficial perineal space, scrotum, penis, and lower part of anterior abdominal wall. It cannot go into the thighs because of firm attachment of membranous layer of superficial fascia to their boundaries. Tubal pregnancy, sometimes the fertilized ovum instead of reaching the uterus adheres to the walls of the uterine tube and starts developing there. This is known as tubal pregnancy. The enlarging embryo mostly leads to rupture of the fallopian tube. Prolapse of the uterus, sometimes the uterus passes downwards info the vagina, invaginating it. It is called the prolapse of the uterus, and is caused by weakened supports of the uterus. Intrauterine contraceptive device, insertion of a foreign body into the uterus can prevent implantation of the fertilized ovum. 
This is the basic principle underlying the use of various intrauterine contraceptive devices for preventing pregnancy. In coiation of the prostatic adenoma, the prostate has a false capsule and a true capsule. The prostatic venous plexus lies between the true and false capsules. In benign hypertrophy of prostate the adenoma only is enucleated, leaving both the capsules and the venous plexus and normal peripheral part of gland. Vasectomy, it is a simple surgical procedure done for family welfare. A segment of vas deferens is exposed from a small incision on the upper part of scrotum. The two ends are tied and a small piece of vas deferens is removed. The procedure is done on both sides. Since hormones continue to be produced and circulated through blood, person remains potent. But, since the sperms cannot pass in the distal part of vas and into ejaculatory duct, the person becomes sterile after 3 to 4 months. Hydrocyl, the testis invaginates the processus vaginalis so that there is a visceral layer and a parietal layer of peritoneum. Collection of excess of fluid in between the two layers is called hydrocyl. Creptorchidism, if testis do not come down to the scrotum at birth or soon after, these are hidden anywhere along its path or these may have gone astray. The testis may be undescended and be in lumbar region, iliac fossa, inguinal canal, superficial inguinal ring or at the upper end of scrotum. The testes may have gone astray, ectopic testis, to be in the region of inguinal canal and may be seen at superficial inguinal ring, root of penis, in perineum, or in thigh. Varicocele, the dilatation and tortuosity of the pampiniform plexus in the spermatic cord is called varicocele. It occurs more commonly on the left side. The factors are, a left testis hangs a little lower than right. B left testicular vein drains into left renal vein at right angle. C loaded pelvic colon may press upon the left testicular vein and prevent its proper drainage. Varicocele may lead to infertility. Ischioanal fossae, it is common as ischioanal fossae are situated on the two sides of the anal canal, deep to the skin of perineum. It is less painful compared to the perianal abscess. The perianal space is situated between ischial tuberosity and subcutaneous part of sphincter on the externus. The septa in this space are small and fat is tightly disposed, so infections are very painful. Pudendal nerve block this is an anesthetic procedure used during vaginal deliveries or forceps delivery. The pudendal nerve is the nerve of perineum and after anesthesia, the vaginal delivery becomes almost painless. The nerve is blocked by the anesthetic drug as it lies on the ischial spine. The blockage can be done through vagina or from the perineum.